it kind of seems as if Dave Rubin's grift is starting to fall apart a little bit. I don't think it's going to hurt him financially in any way, shape, or form. But I think that he's kind of inadvertently revealing himself. And part of this is his own problem, right? He had so much more room for his grift to grow when he still identified as a liberal. But he came out as a conservative. And as a conservative, you have to say certain things. There's this expectation that you will toe the line. But if they think that you're a liberal or a classical liberal, you have more room to kind of reason your way out of difficult situations. So uh, let me give you a couple of examples of that. He was on a television show and he was debating someone and she asked for his vaccination status. They were debating vaccines and vaccine mandates, I'm assuming. And watch the way he melts down like a triggered little snowflake. I'll tell you why he got so offended. Yes, children could transmit the disease, although they rarely do, but the parents are all vaccinated if they're good, decent citizens. So I, I don't really understand the connection, actually. Are you a good, decent citizen? Are you vaccinated? It's nobody's business whether I'm uh -huh. vaccinated. That's like okay. me asking you the last time you got laid. I mean, it's just irrelevant. All right, so, you know, what's really relevant is that it's one thing I, if you have the right my, my to medical, choose for my your... My medical wait, history may I just, is not I, your I, business, let, nor yours is mine. Let, let I, Clary finish. That hit a nerve. He did not want to answer that question. And... I think we all know the reason for that. It's because Dave Rubin is vaccinated. Dave Rubin is vaccinated 100%. The second he was able to get the vaccine when he was eligible, he was first in line, guaranteed, because he knows that the vaccines are safe and effective. But he doesn't want his audience to know that. And that's why he's pushing this line. Oh, it's nobody's business whether I'm vaccinated. That's like asking me, when's the last time you got laid? Is it though? Because I don't think that that's the same thing. That's a false equivalence. And you sound really stupid making that point, Dave. We all know that you don't want to disclose your vaccination status for the same reason that Tucker Carlson doesn't want to disclose his vaccination status. Because that undermines your credibility and I use credibility very charitably, you undermine your credibility among the anti-vax community that you're pandering to. So if they know that you're vaccinated, then when you tell them that the vaccines are bad, they're going to think, well, wait, if you say that the vaccines are bad, why are you getting the vaccine yourself? Why did you get the vaccine? And the more smart people in his audience, there's not many of them, but the more smart ones might put two and two together and think, wait, maybe this person is not walking the walk because what he's saying is bullshit. Maybe he's telling me what he thinks I want to hear, and maybe the vaccine actually is good. Maybe I should get the vaccine because he got it. Does he think I'm stupid? Not many people are going are, are gonna to realize that. But still, it makes you look like a fraud if you talk about how bad the vaccines are when you were vaccinated yourself. So that's why... He doesn't want to reveal his vaccination status. It's not because it's a deeply personal thing to him. He doesn't care that much. He just doesn't want to give up the game, right? And this is why I say that he had a lot more room for his grift to grow had he remained a public liberal. I don't think that Dave Rubin really has an actual political ideology that he cares deeply about. He's just going to follow the money and wherever that leads him, whatever makes him the most dollars. But I, I think that if he pretended to be a liberal, he could then say, look, as a liberal, I got the vaccine, but I'm for people making their own medical decisions. I'm for medical freedom. He could use that bullshit line. But instead, he's backed himself into a corner by coming out hard as a conservative, coming out hard against the vaccines, and he doesn't want to disclose that he's vaccinated because he looks like a fraud. So here he is. I mean, look, I am more than willing to disclose my vaccination status. I am fully vaccinated, proudly so, and that doesn't impact my viewership at all, right? You know that I'm vaccinated. You know where I stand entirely. I got the vaccine because I know it's safe and effective, and I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to protect yourself and those around you. I also support vaccine mandates because it's either we mandate vaccines or we have basically this permanent state of plague because anti-vaxxers who are misinformed by people like Dave Rubin, Tucker Carlson, Jimmy Dore, they would keep us in a prolonged state of plague forever if that were possible because they know that anti-vaccine misinformation, fear-mongering about the COVID-19 uh, vaccines, all of that is very, very lucrative. You can monetize that on YouTube and uh, Facebook, whatever platform they're using, and you know you, you build up support and trust among your right-wing audience. So they 
love that. But um, listen, this is how you know that Dave Rubin is a total fraud because he's using one set of talking points to describe the vaccines when this whole freedom talk contradicts what he says. So he was on a libertarian podcast and they question him. Why are you talking about personal liberty as it relates to vaccines if you're not in favor of legalizing drugs. I thought this this was about bodily autonomy and individual liberty. Take a look. He has no idea how to respond. So you describe yourself as a classical liberal. Um, and as such, you're against, I'm assuming, mandating masks and vas vaccines, uh, even if they can be effective in pr protecting public health, because that would interfere with personal liberties of what to do with your body and life. Yet in your book, you oppose the legalization of Schedule I drugs because addiction hurts communities. Why are you willing to sacrifice the civil liberties uh, in, some, in one case uh, for the public good, but not in the other? So when I talk about the drug part, it's like, yeah, I'm for legalizing marijuana. I'm not for mandating that everyone smokes it. I'm for legalizing uh, most psychedelics. But then there's another class of drugs, basically, that are so highly addictive. We all know about, I'm sure you guys cover the, the fentanyl problem we have in the United States, the heroin problem. I was just in New York City, the amount of people that you see on the streets that are just laying there that are obviously on drugs, you go to San Francisco, I mean, go to most progressive cities, that you just unfortunately have to balance people's ability to make choices for themselves with some level of public good. So here, here's, here's, a, here's the thing, Vince and Dave, like the classical liberal position is that individual liberty is paramount and there is nothing more that has to do with your own liberties and freedoms is what to do with your own body. So mm -hmm. If you are going to say that I can't ingest whatever it is in my body, I think the classical liberal position would be, where does it stop? Can I not drink a, a, a big gulp because, you know, it may harm my body and they say sugar is addictive? Where, where does this actually stop? So my question to Dave is really about what, how he identifies as a classical liberal or, or even a libertarian when you're saying that there should be these strict guardrails. And then again, when we're talking about ingesting drugs, that's what I'm putting into my own body. But when we're talking about COVID, that is something that could affect the people around me. So that's a little bit different. And, and so I'm trying to understand how it is you marry those things. That was embarrassing. And whenever Dave Rubin is challenged even slightly, his entire worldview just collapses, which is why he doesn't usually bring on people is going to challenge him and it's not just that he gets embarrassed when he brings on other people who at least are more intellectually curious and honest and know what they're talking about he embarrasses himself on a daily basis here's another example of him just saying the most idiotic thing he could think of some people who don't even work in offices nor ever have worked in offices because they won't get jabbed i got an email from a guy who's a hospital administrator who has been working at home in his basement for years before covid he has now been laid off. Give up a few more of your rights, guys. Why not, you know, give them access to your bank accounts and your phone records and all that stuff. It's for your own good. They're looking for somebody, a bad person, you know? So just give up some of your rights and, and don't worry. I just don't know how anyone could take Dave Rubin seriously, even right wingers. If I were a right winger, I would feel insulted. I would feel like this man was pandering to me. I would feel like he's trying to insult my intelligence. But most right-wingers, to be frank, are rubes, and they just want to be told what they want to hear. They just want their worldview to be reinforced. That's why they tune into people like Dave Rubin and Tucker Carlson. So I'll, I'll leave that there. Dave Rubin's grift, it's kind of unraveling. It's kind of unraveling. And it's kind of uncomfortable to watch because we know that he's vaccinated. We know that deep down, if you really could hook him up to a lie detector test or, or give him a truth serum, he would say, yes, the vaccines are safe and effective because that's what facts dictate. I mean, that's that's objectively, objectively true. But he's not going to tell his right wing audience that because then he looks like a fraud. And, and I love this. Whenever there's an opportunity to expose or embarrass Dave Rubin, somebody should take that opportunity because this man spreads misinformation. He monetizes hate and 
the spread of bigotry and misinformation. And overall, he doesn't believe a single word that's coming out of his mouth. He's making the world, or making the country rather, a worse place. And he's doing this because it's profitable. What a piece of shit. I don't know how he sleeps with himself at night, but it's probably on a gigantic bed of money. And that's really gross. I mean, there are some things that are more important in life than money. One of them is living with yourself, being honest with yourself and with your audience. But that's not what he prioritizes. So that's why things like this happen, where he looks silly because he doesn't believe in anything. He just is a fucking shameless grifter. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 